All right, this is first grade module one, lesson 27, and we're going to continue using the count on method using a number line to solve subtraction problems. What we're going to do this time, though, is we're also going to begin the process of appreciating efficient techniques. So we're going to be looking at, well, we could use subtraction and do the counting backwards method, or we can do the count on method. Both will work. But the idea is we want students start to appreciate, uh, we want them starting to appreciate looking for efficient techniques, ways that not only do they give us the right answer, but they also do it efficiently. So here we've got nine minus eight equals, and we're gonna put our little box right here, it equals what? And the first thing we're gonna do is we wanna make sure our students remember that the number bond here would look like this. All right, so there's our the classic number bond that would go with this subtraction problem. And the idea is there's a couple of ways students can solve it. One way is students could start on the 9 and then count backwards 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And once we've counted back 8, the answer is 1. Oh, so that tells us the answer is 1. So that's one way we can look at it. Another way we can look at it is by saying, well, let's consider 8 plus what equals 9, and use the count on method, in which case we would start with 8, and we'd count on till 9, and because it's only one step away, that also gives us the answer of 1. So both techniques, this counting backwards technique or the counting on technique, technique. They both give us the answer of 1, but this counting backwards method for this problem requires a lot of work, while the counting on method requires less work. So parents and teachers, we're just beginning the, the conversation to have our students start to appreciate the beauty of mathematics and sometimes its efficiency, right? So if this is this counting backwards method is the only way a child could get the right answer, so be it. It's all right. That For that kid, that might be the most efficient way because that's the only way they can use, the student can use to get the right answer. But for students who can solve it either way, we want them to begin the process of looking for efficient techniques. And in this problem, it looks like the count on method is more efficient than the count backwards. So we're going to just continue doing the same thing. Um, here it, we have a number bond, our classic number bond. So this says our subtraction is going to be 10 minus 3 equals what? And so we can say 3 plus what equals 10. And now students can either use the count backwards method or the count on method. Well, starting with 10 and then count backwards 3. 1, 2, 3. That seems like hardly any work. The answer is 7. Now if we wanted to, we could have started at 3 and counted up to 10. So start at 3 and then go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ah, the answer is 7. Uh, so that's another way we could have figured it out. But I think in this case, the counting backwards method was probably easier, don't you think? Let's just do a quick one here. I'm just going to write the sentences. I'm not actually going to do the subtraction. So here we have 10 minus 6 equals blank. And our addition problem would be 6 plus what equals 10. Give students the opportunity to solve both of these problems and talk about which one to them was less work, meaning fewer hops. So here, <clears throat> you know, the thing I, I chose this is it says pick the best way to solve, okay? Boy, I tell you, we do not want to start causing students to get paralyzed because they don't know the best way. Start with creating an atmosphere where we can find any way, pick any way to solve the problem, and then we can appreciate which method is less work than the other. But really, we, the worst thing in the world would be to cause students to start to get paralyzed with fear because they're afraid they're going to get the answer but not using the best way. 
Right now, any way that gives us the right answer is the best way. And we could talk about efficient methods or more efficient or least efficient methods. That's fine. But let's get, get this word best out of our lexicon. So anyway, using the number line method, oh, 9 minus 7, I would probably use the count on method here. And I would probably use the count on method. Here, 8 minus 2, well, we could use the count on method because some of your students might know, hey, 2 plus 6 equals 8. But other kids might say, well, I prefer the count backwards method and 8 minus 2 gives us six. In either case, we know the answer is six, but I think the point is maybe some students would say, eh, the, this counting backwards method is the least work on that problem. And then the last one, seven minus five. Oh, well, if we were to count back, we'd have to hop backwards five steps, and that's a lot of hopping. Whereas counting on five, six, seven, gives me the answer of two. So I would probably say the count on method is a little easier. But really, teachers and parents, we want to get this word best out of the way. Just whatever method works for the students is fine by us. And the last problem, I just kind of chose this one simply because this is one of those real clear cases where oftentimes the counting backwards method is the easier because you're subtracting so it's such a small amount. So you start with 9, and you go backwards 1, so the answer is 8. Um, that's kind of an easy one, as opposed to starting with 1 and counting up to 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In both cases, we get the answer of 8. Uh, it's just a, a, up to the students to, you know, to choose what method they prefer. Uh, please don't create an atmosphere where students become paralyzed because they're afraid to find uh, they're afraid they're not going to use the most efficient or the best method in either case um, the answer is eight but I think I counted back because it needed fewer hops that's kind of the point point. and that really wraps up grade one module one lesson 27 where we're still using the count on method, but we're also using the count back method, count back method, and then we're using a number path, but the idea is let's compare the count on method with the count back method and decide which one is most efficient rather than the word best.